Good morning and welcome to our devotions for Tuesday in Easter 7. It seems that there are some really serious issues with YouTube and many persons are complaining that they're not able to broadcast through YouTube. Um, Facebook seems to be still working for us so um, at least at the end of the broadcast the devotions is usually saved on YouTube and you can still get it there around 8 o'clock. But welcome, welcome to our morning broadcast and trust that these issues will be resolved. I guess so many persons are doing these things today and other things that it is taking up a lot of the bandwidth. So let us come into a place of quiet as we begin our devotions together this morning.
will sing of your steadfast love. With my mouth, I will proclaim your faithfulness. Eternal God and Father, we, your humble servants, give you praise and thanks for this new day. As we go about our daily activities, we pray you be our guide and protector. We pray also for those who are yet to know you and ask that we who know you may draw others closer to your love and embrace. Comfort the dying, mend the brokenhearted, heal those who are suffering physically or spiritually, and preserve us by your mighty power. These things we ask in no other name, in Jesus' holy name. Amen. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Our reading for today is from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 8, reading verse 18 to 27. Now when Jesus saw great crowds around him, he gave orders to go over to the other side. A scribe then approached and said, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Another of his disciples said to him, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, Follow me, and let the dead bury their own dead. And when he got into the boat, his disciples followed him. A windstorm arose on the sea, so great that the boat was being swamped by the waves. But Jesus was asleep. And they went and woke him up, saying, Lord, save us, we are perishing. And he said to them, Why are you afraid, you of little faith? And then he got up and rebuked the winds and the sea. And there was a dead calm. They were amazed, saying, What sort of man is this? And even the winds and the sea obey him. Here ends the reading. What manner of man is this? What manner of man is this? That even the winds and the waves obey him. This is an important testimony today in Matthew's Gospel in this passage. As we listen to Jesus engaging those who are with him. Uh, Jesus 
responds in very interesting ways in these passages. One guy says, I will follow you wherever you go. I will follow you wherever you go. That passage is sticking with me this morning for some reason. Jesus' answer is interesting. Birds of the air have nests and foxes have holes and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. The Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Oftentimes in our theological reflections, we tend to divinize the term Son of Man and we kind of restrict it to Jesus. But there is a school of thought that in reality when Jesus uses the term that he is not necessarily referring not necessarily referring to him Self, but to humanity in general, Son of Man, the Son of Man. If you listen to it from that perspective and remove the capitals, then it becomes people. People. But then it becomes even more challenging because we we then listen to it in a new context, and it says. Birds of the air have nests where they can abide. Foxes have nests. Humanity doesn't seem to have any place we are forever shifting. Remember the scribe that Jesus is speaking with. The one who is very well placed, very well placed religion of the day. Saying, I want to go with you. And Jesus is, seems to be, well, not attacking, but addressing his restlessness. What of our own restlessness? As much as we have, as much as we think we have accomplished in life, So restless. So the death nicely when he says our hearts restless until they find in God. There's a restlessness in the human person that at times we try to hide with our many activities. We follow one fad after another. One school of thought after another. We are forever searching. We are forever seeking to look outside of our To know more, to understand more, to experience more. But that that desire, that drive, is ultimately is that it helps. It helps
helps us to see to know everything to experience is not outside of it's actually for God has placed in this yourself everything everything so the the journey is not an outside journey it's an inner journey it's a journey of rest interesting way to look at it it's not a journey in action it's a journey in rest the greater the rest the greater the revelation the more our hearts can be at rest. Like the opening hymn this morning, Be still my soul. Be there's, a, there's a verse in that hymn that speaks specifically to the passage that we read this morning. It says, Be still my soul. Thy God doth undertake guide the future as he has the past. Thy hopes, hopes, thy hopes, thy, I'm forgetting it. Hmm. Shows what happens at certain age. But the, the verse itself speaks to that sense of not letting anyone take away that that desire from us, that, that thirst for God. And the hymn goes on to indicate that all that's mysterious will be revealed at last. And the last part of it says, Be still my soul, the winds and waves still know the one who guided them when he was below. The one who commanded him while he was below. Him that song there speaks of the stillness, the stillness within the individual, that sense of rest. And Jesus was saying this to describe the Son of Man is restless. And he doesn't need to be restless. He doesn't need to be looking for other things. He just needs to find himself within. Towards the end of the passage this morning too. Where Jesus is in the storm. And the disciples wake him from sleep. And the first thing he says is, why are you afraid? Oh, you of little faith. It's interesting, you know. When, I, when, I, when I've read that in the past, I've heard it as, faith is too small. But then you wonder, how can you say that? Because in another passage, Jesus will say, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed you can say to this mountain so what is Jesus really saying is he contradicting himself or is he or are we hearing are we hearing him wrong why are you fearful or oh, you of little faith could Jesus be saying rather than what we think he's saying could Jesus be saying why are you afraid You've got faith. Yes, it is little, but it is faith. Why don't you use it? Why don't you use that which you have? Why are you coming to me? Why don't you use what you have? What you have is enough. Why are you afraid? You are faith. Why are we afraid? We have faith. 
Be still. Faith, not as we understand faith by the various doctrines and concepts of man, but faith as that letting go, that complete release into the unknowingness of all that is and losing oneself in order that one might find oneself that faith that faith brings us into a place of rest and peace We live in a world that we are always making reference to the fact that we are stressed or we are anxious about something and we're all doing it, we're all doing it. And I'm coming more and more to realize that a lot of that anxiety that we have is because, because we're seeking to dictate the way forward. Everyone has their agenda. Everyone is thinking that they want life to work out in this particular way for me. I can see, I can see what it looks like and this is what it shall be. And anything that happens that seeks to frustrate that, we are, we are challenged by it. When you look back at your journey, you, you, can, you can always see that you have had an image of something and it was exciting and you, you went after that image. And along the way, or when you were able to accomplish that image, then you realize, well, that image is not as exciting as I thought it was. And here's another image. Um, and you go after that for a little while and you, then you find out, well, you know, let's, let me try something else. And, and foxes. Foxes have holes, the birds of the air have nests. The son of man is restless because he's always going after what he would consider the most perfect thing. But you know what? The most perfect thing for you and for me right in this moment. It is not in some moment to come. It is not down the road when we get the chance to. It's now. It's right now. So whatever is around, whatever is around, whatever the situation is that we are currently right in the heart of, that is our greatest moment. If we allow ourselves to be completely at one with it. That would be our rest. The birds of the air have their nests. The foxes have their holes. Where is your place of rest? It can only be within you. And that's why we are so restless. Because unlike the birds, unlike the foxes, our place of rest is not outside ourselves. Our place of rest is right within us. And until we learn that, until we understand that and become that, we will always have nowhere to lay our heads. Because this journey is not about what we see around us. This journey is about the you and the me who have incarnated in this time, in this 
moment. You and I have chosen to be here in the midst of COVID-19. We have chosen to be here at this time, in this moment, in order that we may learn how to fully be ourselves in this moment. This is our learning. This is our lesson. It's not about tomorrow. It's not about the new norm. It's not about any of that. It is about right now. To be. To simply be. When Jesus got up and calmed the sea, and Jesus came out of his place of rest and peace and declared that everything around him would be as he is. The disciples were amazed. What manner of person is this that commands everything around him? He is. He is a man who has found a place to lay his head. Let that be your knowing. Do not seek it. Do not strive after it. Just be it. Be blessed. And have a good day. And to those who seek to join me on YouTube, I'll continue to see what the challenge is as there are many persons who are making comments about not being able to stream. I'll see what's going on there and see how soon we can resolve it for your sake. So be patient and you'll see how we resolve it. Have a blessed day, great love and great peace for you.